Hello, my name is Gemma and I'm going to talk to you today about virtual yarn shows. I'm going to take you through five misconceptions about virtual yarn shows versus physical fibre festivals. So let's get started. The following video is based on my opinions as an individual following my personal experiences of virtual yarn shows both as a customer or a vendor. Okay, so there is a global pandemic going on. This has affected every single aspect of our lives from the way we interact with friends and family to the way we do our shopping to the way in which various industries are able to function. Now, what's really great is that these festivals, particularly yarn festivals, have not taken this lying down. Dates have been postponed until 2021, bring it on. But also they have been able to adapt. Businesses and people, everyone have been forced to adapt their way of life and their way of business. Now, one of the ways in which fibre festivals have done this is by opting to go virtual. This year I was going to be vending at the Wool Monty Show in Sheffield, which actually just took place this past weekend, and Perth Festival of Yarn in Perth in Scotland. Now, when I realised that things were going to go online, initially my heart filled with dread. However, I could not have been more wrong. So I'm gonna share with you today my five misconceptions about virtual yarn shows. Okay, misconception number one, they are hard to access. This is a myth. Certainly, if it had been happening um, 10 years ago, we would not have been able to access things in quite the same way because the social media that we have now, A, didn't exist in the same, to the same scale and also not as many people had it. But now we have got Instagram, we have got YouTube, we have got Twitter, we have got Facebook, we have email newsletters, we also have the shops and festivals own websites and really great shows make the best possible use of all of these things. I was slightly concerned that they would become exclusionary because not everyone uses Instagram, some people only use Facebook, some people don't like social media at all, so how are we going to get these festivals to people? However, I have just participated in the Wool Monty show and my experience could not have been more positive. They used Instagram, Facebook and YouTube to the best of their ability, which made it really easy to access for lots of people. Also, let's not forget that actually accessing yarn shows is difficult for people to do physically. You've got the travel, you've got the planning, you've got to get the dog looked after, you've got to get the kids looked after, unless they're fibery and they come with you. You've got to factor in travel budgets, accommodation, and there might be festivals you would love to go to, but you just wouldn't have the ability to. With it being virtual, you can access it. So it's actually much more open to a great deal of people. And because the vendors are using their own platforms, it's more easily accessible than it might be otherwise. The only concern that I have, that I still have, is whether or not we know enough about abilities. So people with like visual stress or dyslexia or who can't um, see colour in the same way and the way colours come across on screen versus real life. These are all things that people are having to tackle individually. Myth number two, they are lacking the community atmosphere. One of the best things I absolutely love about going to a fibre festival is that real sense of community. And the two festivals that I was vending at this year are leaders in their field for this. First of all, let's talk about Perth Festival of Yarn, due to take place in September this year, now taking place virtually via the Perth Festival of Yarn website. Perth is an international festival. It attracts people, customers and vendors from all over the world to the beautiful town of Perth in Scotland. Truly international coming together, the chance to meet people. There was um, a knitter lounge where you could go and hang out and knit and maybe meet some of your favourite podcasters. But there were also lots of spaces for you to meet and there were events, fringe events, go on around the outside, the gym flight night, the gala dinner, and all that sort of thing. Now it can be really easy to expect that that, that sense of community is completely lost when we are all isolated in our own homes and not able to actually go and give all the hugs that we would love to give in real life. However, I am thrilled to say that so far my experience, this has not been the case. Let's take the Wool Monty. The Wool Monty is making a name for itself for being really accessible. Smooth floors because it takes place in an arena, extra wide aisles for people to navigate down and extra wide booths as well for people to get into using their mobility aids if they need to. Now, the Wall Monty actually went through a different route. Yes, it did Instagram. Yes, it asked for vendor videos where vendors record themselves doing a virtual tour of their stalls if they've got room to set one up at home. 
but they also created a Facebook group and vendors were able to start posting sneak peeks of things there, but also the customers could interact with one another and talk to one another. I popped on a few times over the weekend. I must admit the challenge for me was keeping track of all the different screens. <laughs> Techno Pratt right here. Um, I popped in a few times over the weekend and it was so nice to see people saying, hi, nice to see you all. Has anyone seen fiber? Does anyone know where I can get a drop spindle? Um, any recommendations for this, that or the other? And customers and vendors alike were jumping in and chatting and sharing things that they were pleased to see. So that was a really nice kind of community atmosphere. And judging from the comments that I saw from customers, they really felt that too. I certainly felt it. Going back to Perth, they, instead of having their knitter lounge, are now having a Zoom room sponsored by Truly Hooked, who dyes award-nominated yarns in Nottingham. Now that's really exciting. There is going to be a Zoom room open all weekend in September. You can still get that sense of community and go and hang out with people and meet new people, which is really exciting. Zoom, for people who might not know, is, although I'm sure you do by now, is an online um, conferencing app, basically. It's an app, it works on phones, on tablets, on iPads, on laptops, on computers, all of these things. And it means that you can actually see people in real time and talk to them in real time, hold up your knitting, hold up your purchases, show your patterns off, all that sort of thing. So that's just two ways in which there is still a really clear sense of community about these fiber festivals. Misconception number three, you miss the interaction with vendors. I know as a customer that one of the most exciting things about going to a fibre festival is seeing the people who dye the yarn that I love in real life, some of whom I'm really lucky enough to now call my friend. And what can compare to seeing actual yarns in the flesh, having a good squish and seeing how colours go together? Well, again, technology has been our friend. Just looking at the Wool Monty this past weekend, Vendors were using the most of their platforms. They were available online all weekend through email, through Instagram, through Facebook direct message, through Zoom rooms for some people, and able to take pictures of yarns and send them off to customers. For example, I had a customer ask me what would go well with one particular colorway. I was able to take both yarns out into my garden and photograph them in the perfect light to get the most accurate color representation and help her with her purchase. And from my perspective, I really enjoyed still being able to match yarns and it was great because not only could I have that experience with my individual customers, but I could then go and show off the combinations that people have put together to other people um, and share inspiration and ideas. The other thing that was happening were lives. I hosted two Instagram live videos on the Saturday, which you can still see on IGTV. Just follow me there if you don't already on Instagram. And I hosted a Facebook Live as well on the Sunday. And I tried to present different things, but I had the option for customers to ask me questions in real time. And finally, I hosted an open house on Zoom. I invited you to come and join me for a knit and natter, show me your patterns in real time and have a chat. And it was really good fun to get to meet people and mix with them on Zoom as well. So I would argue that actually the sense of community is really going strong. Misconception number four is that the festivals are now lacking in uniqueness and they are all clones of one another as people scramble to put their festivals online as quickly as possible with very limited resources available to them. I'm so pleased that actually this isn't the case. One of the reasons that vendors choose to vend at different festivals are location for accessibility and also for what makes those festivals unique and special. And so far, I haven't seen this being a problem in the two festivals that I am vending at. Take the Wall Monty, for example. Rather than just doing lives on Instagram and getting vendors to take over and do a live for 15 minute slots, what they actually asked vendors to do if they wanted to, there was absolutely no pressure for us to do this, was to record videos in advance and send them in. And Wall Monty actually put those onto YouTube so people could peruse in advance of the show and throughout the weekend at their leisure, which was really exciting. And it kept it different, it kept it fun. With Perth Festival of Yarn, they are also going down another route in that they are having their own website being turned into an online marketplace and vendors are stocking exclusive merchandise to Perth. So exclusive yarn colorways, exclusive limited edition bags, things that are really special and unique to that one festival. And buying from that will help both the vendors and the festival themselves. That doesn't mean you can't buy other things from vendors that weekend. Because it's a gallery marketplace online, you will be able to go off and look at the individual vendors 
websites as well and see what else they are offering but the exclusives will only be available there and that keeps it special added to that the zoom lounge over the weekend is going to be super fun and i can't wait to join in finally the big one misconception number five it all moves too fast now this is where common sense comes in i was really pleased that actually people were staggering their shop updates I for one had a shop update on the Saturday and then I restocked overnight and did a further shop update on the Sunday. So if for whatever reason you couldn't come along virtually on the Saturday, you were able to shop with me on Sunday as well. The other thing is people are doing lives at different times and with being able to pre-record things, thinking about the War Monty's YouTube channel, for example, you can see the videos at your leisure at a time that suits you. So wait until the kids are asleep or the puppy's been walked and you've got a nice coffee in your hand, a notepad and pen to make a note of your favourites. And you could either choose to watch the whole YouTube video in one go, which ran to three hours, or there was a playlist of individual vendor videos as well. So it definitely didn't move too fast. The only thing I would say is that for some vendors, you know they're gonna sell out quickly. Um, I can think of one, Hannah for the Corner of Craft. Um, she does bead weaving stitch markers and every update she does on her website sells out like that. Sells out super duper quickly. So for those, I think you just need to do a bit of forward planning. For me, it was a really relaxed weekend. Um, as a customer, I was able to peruse the group and I was able to check out what people were doing on Instagram. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really tired as a vendor because I was having to keep my eye on emails, on Facebook messages, on Instagram messages, do the lives, do the Zoom rooms, uh, but I also got the opportunity to hang out with some people on Saturday night when I did a virtual sip and stitch night as well. And so that's it. Those are my five misconceptions about virtual yarn festivals and how I realized I was wrong. I hope you will consider supporting your local festivals in the future because of course these are people's livelihoods as well and spread the good news and the excitement about all things woolly, fibery and fantastic during this global pandemic when we have virtual yarn festivals. Hope to see you at the next one. I'd love to know what you bought. I'd love to know what your experiences are. Drop them down in the comments below and I will random number generate and select someone to win something a little bit special.